Hey everybody, welcome back to What a Hell of a Way to Die News Roundup. Uh, Francis again. Uh, what happened to these? They kind of fell off because uh, originally I was doing these because Nate was on paternity leave and I kind of needed to fill in a little content and everything. But I, I also really enjoyed doing these. And also I'm just trying to kind of expand beyond uh, the, the podcast Twitter sphere that we kind of find ourselves stuck in. And YouTube, like... I. I, I went over all of the different uh the, the different social medias that I could have gotten into. You've got TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and I kinda have some things with Instagram and Facebook, but and and really on Twitter I'm I post but I don't really post about the show or any uh store updates and things like that. So I, w- I wanted to have kind of another avenue to go down, just to, you know, kind of build up a following with something that's a little bit different than what we're doing on the regular show, the regular podcast. I feel like I've been doing this long enough. Uh, people do kind of care about my opinions for some reason. I haven't quite figured out why that is yet, but I do appreciate it. And I want to be a little bit more accessible to the fans. I want to show you my face. I want to be uh, somebody who, you know, when, when you're watching videos of somebody, it's you're, you're having, it, it just feels more personal, more of a, a connection there. So, I want to have that, and I want to take input from what you guys would want uh, from this. Now, I have ideas. This is not a, like, oh, what should I do? Please tell me what to do. Don't worry. We're going to go over some stuff. I got some new stuff planned for us uh, tonight, and you can tell me if you like it. You can tell me to fuck off if you don't like it. If you don't like it, I don't know why you're watching my YouTube videos anyway, but uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to do uh, a few more of these every, uh, every a couple of these a month, um, I'm hoping. I got to find time. You know, it's hard to find the time to slot in when, you know, I, I need, like, where, where, do you, where do you find two hours during the week? And, you know, I've just, I, I hate to complain about it, but I have two very good active Dungeons & Dragons groups, that one that plays on Wednesdays and one that plays on Sundays. And, like, I just really can't give up another weekend night to fucking around and not hanging out with my family. Uh, which like, look, my, my D and D nights are kind of later in the day, so it's, it's not, it's not that bad, but, uh, you know, it's, it's hard when you're trying to spend time with your wife who you love and she wants to spend time with you and you'd be like, no, I have to, I I have to, uh, go and talk into a camera for an hour. So, uh, I am, I'm finding a place to kind of slot these in, uh, and, and they are going to be irregularly regular uh in that i mean i am going to do at least two or three of these a month going forward the release schedule i can't guarantee not yet um not until i can find some kind of comfortable area to put this all into so uh as i said i've got a few different things that i want to do on this show uh, a little bit different from the way that we were doing things last time now last time i did news updates uh and i would sometimes read from zines from the 1970s the anti-war zines during the Vietnam War. And maybe, you know, still do those, definitely. I'm just not going to lean as heavily on them, because I'm kind of entering this, uh, this, 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 I don't want to call it a renaissance, because I'm 40. Like, it's just, it's kind of a, like, I've finally gotten over myself and realized that I should do the things that make me happy. Uh, And I do, like, you know, I, the stickers and the, the, the patches and everything that we have in the store is great, but I want to create things myself, too. So, I have a lot of things that uh, that art that I do that will be kind of going up in the store. I've already sold a couple of the pieces, and you know these are and we'll, we'll go over them a little bit uh, more in depth. But you know they're they're old signs that kind of get a new life and turned into new things. So I have that. I also have been turning cigar boxes and dice rollers for you D and D people out there, uh, which has been a really fun project to kind of learn and, and figure out. And really, that's what what I'm wanting to do is find these new like things that I can do with my hands and I can do a couple of them and I can get better and better as I go along. Uh, you know, the first cigar box dice roller I made, I I gave away to a friend because I made it. And I said, I found all the places that I made, uh, mistakes here, but this is still a good one. This is my prototype, you know, pass it on to, uh, to her. She's great. She's got a new boyfriend that is, uh, really into Dungeons and Dragons and, and tabletop role-playing games. So, I kind I gave I gave her one and uh, made all the boys jealous at game night for him, but I have a lot of other things that I I want to do. So, you know, where I get these things, um, future plans, uh, future art that I'm going to be doing as well. But also, uh, there's going to be maybe some commentary on videos, uh, specifically around 
the Ukraine and uh, Russian war. Now, I am not ever going to be a let's watch Russians get blown up by, uh, you know, close encounters with with uh, the the drones. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to watch those. Uh, if you really want to watch shit like that, you can go to combat footage, the combat footage subreddit. You can get all of that there. That's not going to be me. Uh, you know, these are going to be videos that uh, may be par- partially that. But also, uh, if you remember, years and years ago, I did a uh, kind of a side-by-side while watching the Ghanan uh, military parade where they have mechs. Uh, they're not good mechs. They're very shitty mechs. But they do have mechs, which is one step up from us uh, in America. We don't have mechs. They keep talking about it. They keep wanting to give me an exoskeleton to carry heavy loads easier, but they never actually uh, come forth with it. So. And look, that's going to be a Japan thing anyway. Japan's going to make the first Gundam, and we're all going to have to bow down to them anyway. So that's uh, kind of long, uh, long way around, kind of what I'm what I'm doing. So please take these into consideration. Also, tell me other things that you might like as well. Uh, I will be releasing these as podcasts on the main feed. But if you are listening to this, understand I'm going to be showing things to the camera. I'm going to be showing videos. Uh, it's going to be a lot better for you if you're watching uh, on on the YouTube video. So the YouTube video will always be linked down in the bottom. You can click on that and you can watch. You can skip forward to the ones that you the, the bits that you need uh, more of a visual aid for. Uh, if you're not, if you just really want to listen to my uh, dulcet Midwest accent lull you to sleep, I can do that too. I'm here for whatever you need. If you need me to just talk for an hour about nothing so that you can fall asleep. That's fine. You know, as long as you're paying five bucks to the Patreon, I don't care what you do with the podcast. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to the next segment. All right, let's do a haul video. I know this is what all the kids love doing. And to be honest, the, the kids have been loving doing this since I was a kid, too. Uh, you, get on, you get on your video and you show all the shit that you bought. So as I said, I'm doing a lot of art. And where I get a lot of the template, the base, the base of what I'm doing is from a place called Savers. Savers is a secondhand store. It's like Goodwill, but it's a little it's a little pricier, but it's also a lot better maintained. So I can find usually a lot better things at Savers, but I still do kind of hit up uh, Goodwill and everything. Uh, there's there's a pl- there's a Goodwill here that we have that uh, we just call the bins, and that's where it's like the last chance Goodwill stop. They just wheel these giant bins in, and you buy shit by the by the pound basically. So uh, clothes and books and anything and anything that doesn't get picked up is gone. They, they, they get rid of it. So Goodwill always has like really good turnover savers, not so much, but savers is usually a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, a little bit more brightly lit and things like that. So I get a lot of stuff from savers. Now earlier I had mentioned, uh, that I was making cigar box rollers. So, and the one that I gave to my, my friend is very much like this one that I have here, this red one. I, uh, we found like nine of these at Savers one day, and we picked them all up. So these are currently in the store if you want one. Uh, and so what what I do is I you know I get the uh, I kind of create a uh, a whole new inside here. So uh, th- these are basic. I mean, cigar box humidors are all wood on the inside. There's not really anything very fancy about them. Uh, you would just have a blank wood here thing. Uh, usually there's a sticker up here or the, uh, the branding of whatever cigar. So this one was actually interesting because these had stickers on, on the front and on the inside that I took off. So these are, these are going through their third life actually, because they have been cigar boxes for two different, uh, companies. So, uh, what I do is I put this liner in, I put this nice little divider. I've got your dice in here and to spice it up a little bit. This is all whiteboard up here and a little, uh, dry erase marker for you. So. Uh, if you're like me and you need to constantly keep notes but not necessarily want to keep having to write things on your uh, character sheet uh, and erase things and all that, you've got a whiteboard in here with uh, the little thing right there. So these uh, these are very quick and very easy ones. Um, like I said, these are the first ones that I started making. Uh, these were my uh, – the, they, they were my, my foundational uh, find for doing what I would continue to do because – I have much more complicated pieces already. Uh, friend of the show, Jack Murphy, uh, who has his own podcast, um, he sent me a whole bunch of cigar boxes because he plays he plays Dungeons and Dragons and he smokes cigars. And I sent him back one that uh, is actually a double decker. Some of these some of these are pretty thick, 
and uh, have a little bit of space to them, so you can make them double deckers. So you can have a rolling pier, uh, plane on top, and you can take that out, and you know you can have storage underneath. You know, st- a lot of them still have the dry erase boards that, that are in there as well. You know, I'm I, I'm playing around with a lot of different stuff. So if you're kind of nerdy and you think that you might like something, you know, you can fit your dice in it. I have one uh, piece actually. It's called the the Game Master's Box. Because it was an old silverware drawer holder. So I had to tear and clean all the stuff. I got to tell you, tearing, tearing those things up, like the things that all, all your like really nice silverware that uh, your mom or your grandmother wouldn't let you, you know, bring out. Or, or only came out when Fancy Company was around. Uh, though you, Sometimes I find those boxers at the secondhand store. And just having to tear all that stuff out, sand it all down, and, and refinish everything. It's a pain in the ass, but I'm getting faster and better at it, so it's moving along very nicely. But the GM box is really nice because it's the same thing. It's got a huge whiteboard on the top, a much larger rolling field because I know the Game Masters usually got to roll a lot of different dice, but it also has a pullout drawer on the bottom. And the pullout drawer is big enough that you can put your character sheets in there, you can put extra dry erase markers. Uh, you can you can put, like, a source book in there, too, as long as it's not some, like, gigantic delta green book uh and you're just playing normal 5e or something you can fit a decent size book in there i i have my for photos i uh the only source book that i own right now is a uh, uh uh call of cthulhu 6 uh i think whatever the 6 version is and i they're not on 6 anymore so i just have a book that i throw in there to kind of show that yes it, it can fit in there so if you're uh, if you're doing in person Dungeons and Dragons, and I hope that you are, uh, if if you have that opportunity, and you're looking for something to uh, bring your dice in, make it look look really nice, and then when you roll the dice and go all over the fucking table, that's what I always hate. Sometimes when you go and uh, you're playing on a table that doesn't have any kind of covering on it, so it's like just the hard surface of the table, those dice will bounce everywhere. So I like having this. Not only does it uh, keep it in, keep it within. Uh, uh, area here but this is a a thick um, material that I put in here that really deadens the sound so you don't have that like hollow wood sound on it I don't know if you can hear that but there's some dice rolls for you on it so a couple of those uh, and I'm going to have more of them because I have a shitload of these all around uh, in my basement because there's the ones that Jack sent me Uh, there's ones there's other ones that I have uh, I have you know, gotten from savers, uh, and, and and I just keep finding more and more. So uh, the next thing that I want to show you kind of goes along with this, and this was a really fantastic find here. So this is what I'm talking about. This is a box that says Holy Bible, and when you open the box up, you have space for a King James Bible in there, and there's a picture of Jesus. Jesus, uh, white, white Jesus uh, is here to watch your dice roll. So interesting thing that we found out about this, because I've already taken the uh, them out, but there were like little uh, placards that were in here, a little, just little paper ones that were taped in there with double-sided tape. It was a, uh, uh, we're sorry for your loss, but it was from a brotherhood of uh, IBEW, but it was before it was the IBEW, where, Back before it was I, IBEW, it was uh, just Brotherhood something. I don't know. But, you know, the, these these are old. And here's what we can find out. Because on the back, I have two of these, too. Uh, so I have this one that says Holy Bible, and I have another one that is uh, kind of a similar design. But if you look at the back of them, this little insignia, you probably can't see it very well. Uh, but on the other one, this insignia tells you that this is Union Made. And what we can kind of... So, and you can buy these online. Like, I found where you can buy these online. I originally thought these were very Catholic coded because uh, ca- Catholics really like to give, like, when somebody passes, they have prayer cards that they give out. And and so this kind of, like, was tickling me in that, like, it's kind of a prayer card thing, but, like, this is way bigger. And this is a sorry for your loss, here's a Bible, uh, rather than the prayer cards. I think the prayer cards are nice because they're small. You can collect them. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. This thing's really big. Uh, so what we uh, have been best able to figure out is that these were probably from uh, possibly possibly uh, Depression era uh, when, not these, these are not from that time, but this concept, because Union Carp- Carpenters were out of work 
uh, the unions needed something to do. So they're like, hey, you carpenters, knock these together for us. Uh, we can turn them into these boxes. We can give them away. So it's kind of a, a kind of a make work thing. But these are still made. They are still union made too. So if you really want to get some of these, look up uh, Bible box and you will find that. But like I said, I have two of these. So these are going to become holy rollers. Uh, we're going to put the uh, the rolling area in here. I will keep Jesus so that Jesus can watch over. You know, it's it's going to be kind of a uh, kind of awkward. He's going to be side eyeing it. But you know, if you really want to open it up like that, you know, I'll put the uh, the dice down here so you can really display. Show off to everybody your Jesus. So two of those. Watch for holy rollers in the store soonish. Uh, so this is kind of a part of, as I was telling you, I find art and I give it a new life. So this is a uh, gather here with grateful hearts. Uh, this is a, you can see it's got little feet on it. So you can hang this up on your wall or it can be kind of like a uh, little thing you put there and you can put stuff on top of it. Um, so this is MDF, uh, cheap, you know, the, these things are not, they're, they're, they're cheaply made. Generally you buy these things, uh, in, uh, Bansko enterprise, uh, limited, if you want to look it up, but I always find all kinds of stuff like this. A lot of stuff from Michael's, uh, cause Michael's and Joanne will sell blanks, uh, you know, like here's, you know, unfinished wood circle that you can put whatever you want on it. So a lot of times they'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get a lot of stuff from there, but this, this is a little bit more purpose built. Uh, these legs are glued on. Uh, I can tell that they're glued because the glue is really badly done and sticking out on the sides there, but that's okay. You know what? The feet aren't going anywhere. So this one, um, I, I really have, I, I also have like, uh, you know those little kits that you can buy that you can turn anything into a clock where it's just basically the hands and it's got a battery pack on the inside and you just got to put a, a hole somewhere and then stick it through, uh, tie it down, or um, screw it down, and you've got a clock. So perfect wall clock, I think. This would be something that could, that could hang up somewhere. I haven't come up with an idea for it yet, though. So uh, this is uh, a good probably 14 inches uh, di diameter here. Uh, if you've got an idea... Shoot me down in the comments. Uh, let me let me know what you think. Uh, a good kind of a good kind of painting or something like that. When when I look these up, like a lot of wall clocks now are like records that get cut into uh, some kind of landscape. If it's a Star Wars one, Star Wars uh, things cut like like cutting the the uh, the vinyl itself. So I don't see a lot of this stuff at the moment which is why i like doing this because i'm seeing i've never seen a clock made out of something like this so i want to do that i just have to figure out what i'm going to do so uh my, my basic process though is sand it all down uh hit it with a uh coat of depending on what i'm going to do either i hit it with a base coat of white or black and then i will uh break out my cricket i'm a man with a cricket and i love it and i will create a stencil of whatever it is and put it down paint and everything pull it off put the uh thing in there so i don't know i don't know again please if you have if you have ideas let me know so this is another future dice roller but this one might stay mine uh so this is a napoleon box this is a jewelry box originally and you can uh, swank, uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't something like, oh, what a, what a find. This is made in like the 60s or something. There's nothing special about this. It's not even made out of particularly nice materials or anything. The insides were absolute garbage. I've, I've cleaned them out at this point, but you can still see there's a lot of glue in here that I can kind of cut out, but it's easier to sand. So, uh, but my, my plan for this one is I'm going to do like a French tricolor down here. Uh, on the rolling base and then up here I'm going to have that famous uh, painting of Napoleon crossing the Alps and put some kind of quote over here maybe uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see where what I what I go for but I thought my, my wife found this one and she's just like well, obviously I have to get this because it says you know Emperor Napoleon on it but uh, it was a jewelry box for all of your your little knickknacks but soon it's going to be my uh, my French roller and you know I have uh, in the past threatened Joe and Carrie to do some kind of French uh, 
French themed, you know, uh, Napoleonic era role playing game. Unfortunately, the only one that I can find that is uh, that that's already built for Napoleonic times is called Beat to Quarters, but it uses a card system instead of dice. And I don't, I don't look. I'm not going to say that like you can't innovate and you can't do new things, but um, this old dog doesn't want to learn new tricks. I know, I know how to roll dice and add numbers. All right, that's that's what I want to do. Now this uh, rid of the Napoleon one here. There you go. Uh, this is another thing that we picked up from Savers. Yep, Savers got the Savers price tag on it. A uh, little Sweet Dreams one, very nice. Hang it up in your in your child's nursery. So, our pricing for this one uh, started at fourteen ninety nine from Home Goods. Uh, if you are a man and you don't know what Home Goods is, or uh, if you're a woman and you don't uh, and you haven't haven't entered this era of home decor in your life, it's a home decor store. Uh, compare. See, so here's our pricing fall downs here. So uh, compare at $25 is what Home Goods is saying, but they're selling it for $14.99. Now, this one's Savers and got farmed out $5.99. Now, I don't ever buy anything at Savers without a coupon because I'm not, I'm not crazy. Some of this stuff is a little overpriced. So on uh, Wednesdays, military. Uh, so this is 25% off that I got on this. So six bucks, 25% off, you know, you get, you get an extra dollar off of that. So. Uh, dollar and plus. I'm not going to do the math in my head right now. Uh, but this is, I like this because it's got this really nice border on it. Uh, I actually posted a picture of uh, kind of what I am planning on doing this one. Um, if you've been following me long enough, you know that I have like I have this like obsession with the Killdozer. Um, in 2004, this crazy man named Marv uh, Hemeyer, uh, and, and you know he he lost his shit at the local government and spent 18 months secretly armoring a massive bulldozer and then went and just tore shit up all over uh all over the place in in Colorado in Granby Colorado so and, and every time i post about killdozer i get somebody who's like well, you, marv hemeyer was an asshole he was he was an asshole he was a shithead he was trying to kill people very luckily he didn't and uh the only person who died was himself by his own hands fuck him but he did create the killdozer so you know we we got to have something uh we, we we celebrate the uh, the drive of the man, not the man himself, I guess, right? Uh, so this is going to be, you know, again, sanded down. We'll keep this middle, uh, this the uh, the really nice kind of uh, fake worn edges on this one. Uh, do a white background on it, and then uh, and then put my my stenciling down on that. Uh, so we also get books. Hold on. So we have uh we have a little free library in front of our house and we fill it up with books from uh from Savers. It's where we get our books from. So we do occasionally get ones for ourselves. Uh we found this one, The Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Demonology by Russell Hope Robbins. And I looked this one up and uh this is from uh original copyright nineteen sixty nine. So back when they really fucking believed in a lot of that shit. But this is really like this is a very uh uh in depth encyclopedia about witchcraft and demonology the devil's mark what is the devil's mark you can look that up exorcism they got a whole lot of stuff on exorcism uh edward fairfax an elizabethan gentleman a uh, few stone scholar and translator of tasso persisted in charging six women living in the forest of naresboro with bewitching his children with fits and visions uh though the women were released at the york uh Assizes, Fairfax brought them to trial. Uh, the justices allowed them to escape since the evidence reached not to the point of the statute. So you can get a lot of uh, a lot of stuff on here. So looking forward to a little light bedtime reading on that one. Now I am going to say that there are going to be things that I am going to pick up and actually put into the store as well. I'm planning. I'm doing a revamp of the store. We're moving over to Shopify. A whole lot of other things going on in the backgrounds, but. Uh, the, the plan is to have like the, uh, I don't know, the, the podcast attic, uh, section where all these, you know, fun, like coffee mugs that I, I found, like I found a McDonnell Douglas, uh, desert storm coffee mug for the, uh, the AH 64 Apache. It's from 1991. You're not, I'm not going to find them anywhere else, uh, other than like eBay, very overpriced. When I find these things for like, you know, it's not much. 
uh, you know, four or five bucks, I have no problem turning around and selling them for like 10 or 15. It, you know, that covers my, my shipping and, uh, uh, makes me a little profit on it. So, uh, there will be that section. Sometimes books will go in there. Um, maybe this one will, but I, uh, I had to pick this one up. Triumph in the Desert, uh, the challenge fighting the legacy of the Gulf War, a uh, commemorative photo history of the Gulf War. So uh, I'm not going to get into the politics of the Gulf War or any wars in any Gulfs that we do, but I am a big fan of uh, photo books and especially war photo books from wars that uh, I didn't get to, I didn't get to partake in. Uh, man, look at that. Look at, the, look at those chocolate chips, man. Ah, oh, God. I'm, I'm, so I don't know, I don't know what a uh, chocolate chip camo weave would be, but that's, that's me right there. So this is a, a really great, uh, really great book that I'm looking forward to going through just because uh, I love, I, I love uh, history. And, you know, this is one of those like not so distant kind of wars that we did uh, where, you know, people, the people who fought in it are still alive and, and still like, you know, youngish, you know, fifties, but not, not like, you know, World War II where like we've got a couple hundred year old guys hanging out and that's it. All right, and a couple of other things I'll show you. Two more frames here. Uh, let's see. This is wood decor from Place and Time, Funhouse Craft. Uh, so these are ten bucks, right here, uh, generally. But I got them for three dollars a piece. Uh, again, though, really easy ones to put. Like you know, I. I uh, you know, a, a one that's really popular, uh, that I do is the, in this house, we believe this is not a place of honor. No great deeds were done here. You know, that whole, uh, I have, I've made a couple of those, so I'll probably do that with these. Cause that's a, a really easy one to throw on down there. And, uh, finally, Oh, finally, I got a little something. I don't know if I'm going to give this to my dad or if I'm going to keep it myself. All right. So what else I have is this. Uh, wooden city mechanical model. My dad really likes putting these together. He had like a marble run one that he did. But look at this clock. Look at this clock that they've they've got there. Uh, and I got this for eight bucks. And again, twenty five percent off, so six bucks I got this for. And these are just really fun little puttery. This is like a total dad. Like I don't. I every once in a while I see when I'm at when I'm at Joanne with my wife. When I'm at. Uh, Michaels, uh, uh, or any, anywhere, uh, that sells models, I will see models and I get this, like, I get a little itch because I, I put together a lot of models when I was a kid. I put together, uh, a couple of battleships. I put together, uh, an A-10 Warthog, um, uh, a B-2 bomber, I think is what now, but yeah, but the B-2, the big, one with the big wingspan, I think. So I put together a lot of really cool models, uh, when I was younger. I don't do that anymore. Again, I don't really have time to putter. I'm trying to find time to put this in. So having that like putter time of, uh, I, I can, you know, kind of do that. I don't have it. And like, my concern is I'm going to start this and I'm not going to finish it much like the, uh, Technic, um, Hilux that I've got going on. Uh, that I'm a quarter of the way through that I need to get back to. Uh, you can put, if if you want one, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, if you go over to Doomer dot shop, you'll uh, you'll you'll see that he's he's got those over there. That's where I bought it from, uh, and I've been slowly putting it together. But it's just it's just finding time. You know, it's not that it's hard and that I can't do it. It's just I get I got to find time. And when I do find a free hour somewhere, I don't necessarily you know use it to do things like that. So um, this is not what we got tonight. It's not. Everything we got tonight, this is things that we have kind of picked up over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I'm going to, in future episodes, show you updates. Uh, I'm hoping, so the Napoleon box, uh, what I'm waiting for on that is I want my wife to get me some kind of, uh, I don't, for the fabric on the inside, I don't have anything that's light colored. I only have dark colors. Uh, so I need like a white vinyl that I can paint so I can do the the, uh, the French tricolors in it. Um, but all the rest of it is all, uh, it's a uh, uh, macrame. Uh, no, not macrame. Uh, decoupage. We uh, painted onto the thing. So I'll, I'll have I'll have updates for that. We'll see if that goes in the store. We'll see if I keep if I hold on to it. But uh, I do have a lot of uh, a lot of these things will be going in the store once they're done. Uh, I'm looking forward to working on both of these this weekend and uh, and get these up in the store. I promise that I am going to have the uh, uh, this will come out. I'm not going to put these into the store and let them sell out because I only have two of them. 
and then release this and, and give you guys all a bummer. So don't worry, they will not be in the store. I haven't really done anything with them yet either. Like I've barely I've taken I've taken the little things out there, but I haven't I haven't really dug into these yet. And I'm gonna have to put little hinges in it, maybe. Or maybe I'll just keep it like that. I don't know. I don't know. Much to think about. All right, let's go on ahead and uh, go over to our next segment. All right, we're back. So let's talk about uh, some some combat videos. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to show you blowing up bodies. I don't want to do that. We're not going to do that. I'm not always going to be showing combat footage. Maybe there'll be something else uh, out there. You know how the TikTokers like to do the little stitch thing? Uh, I'm going to do that, but with OBS and put it on YouTube because uh, I, I do not have TikTok brain. I've managed to I managed to not uh, get get stuck inside of TikTok brain. So where you have to where all the cuts and everything like that. No, I can't do that. So instead of all that, uh, what we've got is uh, is watching some videos and ha- and, and kind of talking about some of them. So the first one that we're going to talk about here, uh, and maybe you've seen this one, is the the Bradley versus the BTR. So a uh, little backstory on some of these vehicles here. The M2 Bradley is a American infantry fighting vehicle. Uh, it is meant to be able to get troops, get the troopies that can climb into it, get them to whatever point so the troopies can get out. Uh, also provide armor because it's an armored vehicle and suppressive fire. It's got a 25 millimeter chain gun on it. It's a big gun. It goes thump, 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 and things blow up. Uh, now, infantry fighting vehicle, a lot of times people will look at these and call it a tank. The Bradley is one that's really hard to say that because it has wheels. It doesn't have treads, but it is still a armored vehicle with a big gun on it, but it's not technically a tank because uh, the tank cannot get your people from one place to another. It can only move the tank crew itself. Nobody else can get in. So the Bradley fighting vehicle was also the, uh, the, the, the plot, the, it, this movie. So the Bradley fighting vehicle was the, uh, uh, fuck, what word am I thinking of? So the, so the movie Pentagon Wars is about the production, uh, the design and everything of the Bradley, the M2 Bradley. It is a comedy movie. But it is, uh, it does kind of, it, it is a true telling of the Bradley fighting vehicle through its development in the, uh, you know, God, I can't remember how far it went back, like 60s, 70s or so, 80s. You know, there, there's always this desire to have a better armored fighting vehicle. You need something that can get, you know, personnel onto the field, but get them there in something that can, you know, protect them. So we use the Bradleys. We, uh, I love the Bradleys. I know that they were uh, Bradleys. There's also we also have Strikers, which are also uh, infantry fighting vehicles. I believe somebody might correct me on that one, but I uh, infantry fighting vehicles is really what they they still kind of fall in. Strikers are big. They are also wheeled, uh, and they have big guns on them as well. So you know, kind of kind of the same same thing. It's not a tank. Uh, to get a tank like a tank main gun into battle, it has to be on a tank. So these are smaller, uh, a little bit faster, a little bit more low profile. Uh, they're not as heavily armored as a tank would be. They're not as heavily armament. They are armed, excuse me, they're not as heavily armed as a tank, but they are still great if you, uh, if you need some kind of suppressive fire, if you need to put rounds on a building so that, you know, to kind of soften it up before the little troopies run out from outside and go into the building. They're great. Uh, I have a lot of use cases. And I was kind of looking into some of the doctrine for uh, for for the Bradley, and sorry again uh, to to side note this doctrine uh, is how we do things with the kind of the equipment that we have. So if uh, you know you have a Bradley book that tells you how to do the things on the Bradley, how to turn it on, how to use the window wipers, how to mount a gun up to it, you know, they all have. Uh, you know, instruction booklets on how to operate the machine. Everything in the army comes with an instruction booklet. Some of them are just bigger than others. So there is an instruction booklet, but that's not that's not doctrine. Doctrine is how we use these uh the these arms in combat. Uh and none of this stuff is is 
hard to come by. You can find all of this stuff free online. And it's not because, you know, like, oh, it's, you know, we're, we're fine. We'll tell you all of our secrets. We literally have to because you have to teach these things to tankers. And tankers are 18 year old dipshits who are going to, you know, go out and talk about all the cool shit they've learned about tanks and how to use tanks. You know, I was never a tanker and uh, I would not have known about the concept of shoot and scoot where you shoot. But the problem is when you shoot, everybody now knows where the fuck you are. So you got to scoot. You got to move away. You got to shoot and then move because they're dialing in on you immediately as soon as you as soon as your main gun goes off. So, you know, that so that is doctrine for for tank firing um, under certain circumstances, I'm sure. Again. I'm going to be yelled at by a tanker one way or another talking about all of this. So uh, the, the doctrine for the M2 Bradley is usually working in tandem, you know, having two or three of them working together uh, that can support each other and also bring in a platoon size element. A small platoon, but a platoon. Now, Ukrainians don't really have that luxury to base their things off of our, uh, our, our doctrine because like I said, we design this thing and then we say, here's how you use it. And then that's how we use it. And sometimes there's a little bit of, uh, you know, um, changing on the battlefield as, uh, as the situation warrants. Of course, people, you know, take doctrine and flip it on its head. And, you know, depending on the situations on the battlefield. Uh, so the, uh, the doctrine is out the window because now you've got Bradley fighting vehicles that are just like, sometimes we've got a, we got a two on two or two on one a tank, or sometimes we just have to do this shit, which is drive towards a BTR playing chicken with them. It's not really in the doctrine, but we are really getting uh, uh, to see how well the, the Bradley operates under combat conditions. And this is, this has always been a thing that like, it's hard. It's a, it's a hard square, square to circle, right? Where I hate war. I don't want war because the, People that are hurt by war are people who want nothing to do with it. The civilians are always the worst hurt, whether that be uh, invading armies, whether that be famine, whether that be loss of infrastructure. The civilians get killed the most. The more civilians die than uh, usually the combatants on the battlefields. And uh, the, surveil- the civilians, just they're always getting the short end of the stick. So I hate war. At the same time, I love to see how well these things, I, I like to see them be good at their jobs. And at least with Ukraine versus Russia, we have kind of a clear good and evil. Like, I don't, I don't know if you are first time here, but we are not really pro Russia here. Uh, certainly I have an affinity for the Soviet union, but in that I like its culture, not that I think that we should all be Stalinist, N- nothing, nothing like that. So at least here, when we get to, uh, watch a BTR get fucked up by an M2 Bradley, we're uh we're watching some bad guys get hit. So, uh let's go ahead and expand this out so you can watch the whole thing. Now, I am sure that probably a lot of you have uh have watched this. You know, it, it was it was making the rounds, right? It was making the rounds all over Twitter um uh, and uh, Instagram and things like that. So, if you follow any of those uh OSINTs or any like kind of military connected uh accounts, you probably saw this. Now, what we have here, what you see on the screen is a Russian BTR. Now, uh, BTR, I couldn't tell you what it stands for because it's Russian um, and I can't pronounce it, but it basically boils down to armored car. It's an armored car that does armored car stuff. Um, it's kind of in the same, it, it's a armored infantry fighting vehicle. So it is their version of the Bradley or the Striker or the uh, M1113s. Any of those things that like an armored thing to get troops into battle, that's what the, that's what the BTR is. So, and I don't, I don't say that to be reductive of like, it's just an armored car. The BT series is a, a, is a series of, uh, uh, military vehicles that are created by Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine makes them too. So there are Ukrainian BTRs as well out there. Uh, so we've got our BTR coming in, uh, coming in hot here. And uh, so, as it says, it it's showing a uh, uh, a Bradley, an M2 Bradley that uh, was given to the Ukrainians by uh, America. Can't think of a better thing. Uh, I mean, like maybe F22s, we give them those. But 
Uh, for for the ground to ground stuff, man, uh, you really can't beat a uh, a Bradley fighting vehicle. So you've already got if if you take a close look here, you've already got some guys kind of falling off. I'm gonna roll out, you know, like wh- which would be my all, like I don't know if these guys are dying. Most likely, they're saying I'm the fuck out of here because the biggest target on the battlefield right now is the BTR. And if they are not in the BTR, that means they're secondary targets, which means that they have a chance of getting the fuck away and maybe running into the field and not, not getting their shit rocked. So uh, a couple guys kind of uh, jump ship here on the, uh, 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 on the BTR. And you can also see, this is one that has one of the little cope cages up on top. Love, love a good cope cage, uh, uh, a little chain link fence to, to put up on the top because that's going to stop a fucking javelin missile from uh, dropping on your head and wrecking all of your shit. Uh, javelin missiles, man. Fantastic, uh, fantastic tank busters. It, also, another thing is like, I mean, if I, I'd love to see them in action. I'd love to see how, how well they, they work at doing something. And at least we get to watch some shitty guys get fucked up doing it. So uh, here, comes, here comes our intrepid heroes pretty soon. So you can see the BTR popping off rounds. And now you've got the Bradley down here uh, in, your, in your bottom left. So you saw, if, you, if we go back a little bit, you're going to see some. So you can see the flashes of uh, the, the forward gun on the BTR shooting. But I think earlier, if we go, if we go even further back, the sparks that come off of it is it getting hit first. So that is the chain gun hitting it, and then that is them trying to respond. So you got a couple guys who who beat feet and got the fuck out of there. Here comes the uh, the the Bradley up here, coming through, working that uh, working that chain gun on the top. This is I've never seen this before. On honestly, like this head to head kind of shit, and this is the like I don't. This war is so horrifying in like what it is, what it has evolved to. Like, you know, I mentioned the drones earlier, like drone, just get like, you just hanging out and then just like a, a fucking AliExpress drone buzzes over and drops a grenade in your lap. Like it's shit that happens these days. Uh, or the fly or the drones like chasing people and you, uh, you get the, the last frightened look before the thing detonates on them. It's a messed up war that we've got going on here. And this right here, this is like, you know, in theory, this is not supposed to be anything that you, that you do with either of these vehicles. But the Russians have no doctrine whatsoever. Like Russians, they, they are generally shoving people into tanks who don't know what to do with tanks. And their only instruction is here's how to make a go. Here's how to shoot, uh, especially if they're conscripts. And look, I'm I'm being reductive. I'm I know that they go through some training, but they don't go through like the doctrine stuff that our tankers go through. Like, if I would trust my you know cracked out you know Zin Zin sucking monster drinking nineteen year old tanker way more than a Russian one, uh, because the my my guy at least knows the concept of shoot and scoot, or knows you know how how to use these things properly and in tandem with uh, with other people. But again, these guys are, you know, sometimes all you got's one Bradley. So we get to see kind of what, uh, what that does. And what that does is fuck shit up. So you can see that the, uh, the BTR is still trying to pop off some rounds. He's coming. He's coming. More guys getting the fuck out of there. That guy is done. Dunzo. And I think, I mean, I don't know if this is a, uh, the whole thing was just not, uh, the, the, you know, it was completely uh, disabled and just rolling, or if that's just ghost riding at that point, because you can see some guys running around up top there. As this thing, you know, up up here, some guys running. Those go- those were dudes on the BTR, and they're you know getting the fuck out of there. I feel like everybody bailed and just uh, ghost ro- ghost riding the whip of the uh, the BTR there. And there it goes running over some trees and parking to a stop. So uh, this. Yeah, let's watch it in its full glory. Look at him go. Ivan's out. He's out. He's not wanting any part of this. There's your Bradley. There's your chain gun going off. 
Like, and the crazy thing is that the Bradley got all the first hits in, and I don't even know if uh, if the VTR got anything. You can you can still see it shooting wildly after they pass. So, yeah, th- those guys don't uh, you know not not well trained or probably just freaking the fuck out too. Like I I would be as well. But there's a lot of great there's a lot of other great Bradley vehicles that have uh, sorry um, videos that have come out as well. Uh, there was a really good one of a Bradley really laying into, I think like a T62, which is pretty wild. Um, that's tank and Bradley's are not supposed to be able to necessarily penetrate tank armor, but if it's Soviet tank, sometimes you, you, you find a way. So, uh, take a look, take a look for some of those. If you've got any videos that you think, uh, I should, I should watch and comment on like this one, send them, send them to me. Uh, Sergeant Joker at hell of a way to die. Hell of a way to die. Dot com, uh, or just comment down here in the uh, in in the comments section and uh, and let me know. I really like I, I kind of like doing this, but I don't I don't like I don't want to be a combat footage guy. I don't want to be a uh, uh, the guy who who does OSINT stuff. And uh, you know I have no I have no real problem with the open source intelligence accounts because I'm not going to dig around on Telegram for them, but. Just take anything that they say with a, with a grain of salt sometimes, you know. There were a lot of OSINT accounts that were saying that uh, the Houthis had destroyed a uh, an aircraft carrier, which absolutely did not happen. Look, Houthis, I understand what you're doing, but you're you're not you're not taking down an aircraft carrier. Not not with your not with your little uh short of ship one. So uh that uh that has been our video watching series. Uh, I think that's going to go ahead and do it for me uh, for this one, though. I'm not going to do a news update, but I will talk about some of the stuff that we have coming out. Um, as all the things that I showed you in the store, uh, some of those are going to be in the store. Uh, I am not necessarily getting away completely from doing patches and stickers. I'm actually going to be doing T-shirts soon. So I'm going to have more designs and have more things happening, but that's all part of the my my migration over to Shopify and everything. And that's that it's. It's just going to take me uh, a little bit of time to do that. So, uh, but all of that's going to be coming soon. Um, got some good uh, episodes, some good bonus episodes that came out this uh, this past month. Um, I did a cruise special, uh, not cruising in the uh, rest stop bath area, bath bathroom kind of cruising, but getting on the big boats. We did. I did an episode with this of that with the zoo crew a couple of years ago, and I wanted to. Do a new one and re up, uh, re up the the cruises that that you can go on. So everything from like, you know, the Flogging Molly and Three Eleven cruise to Swingers cruises, if you're into that, uh, and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop at Sea, if you want to listen to that, that's over on the Patreon, five dollars a month. Uh, also, Deadliest Warrior, uh, the Deadliest Warrior episode should be recorded and out by the time uh, by next week. Sorry, uh, probably not by the time this is uh, out because. I'm not recording for another couple of days, but if you have not been on the uh, on the Patreon and you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, every month I have been watching an episode of Deadliest Warrior with a rotation of uh, recurring guests. So some uh, some people from other podcasts. Uh, the next one that I have is going to feature the uh, Greg, uh, and uh, I can only think of his Twitter name uh, off the top of my head, SLC Hunk. Uh, over on the Brigham Young podcast. So I'm going to bring them on to talk about an episode. Uh, I've had a lot of other people on. I think we're on, we're coming up on episode five. So if you really love that, like, if you're really like yearning for that, uh, that mid aughts or that like 2009, that's when we, we figured it came out. Uh, Spike TV back when, you know, we finally had a TV for men. Uh, we don't have TV for men anymore because of woke also because of ratings apparently. But so that uh, that episode's coming out, but I've got plenty of episodes uh, of those. Like I said, we've done I've done about four of them already. So the fifth one's going to be coming out, and there's going to be a new one every month. So every month uh, for bonus episodes, I I don't want to always rely on watching something and asking you to watch something or listen to me talk about something that I watched because like I don't know the let's comment on consuming media is is fine. I I'm not against it uh, overall. But I do not want it to be the only thing I do, so that's why I have the uh, the cruise episode that came out. Um, the one before that was a uh, an advice one for Ask the Zoo Crew, and I've done advice ones in the past before. 
especially ones where I go out and find like the craziest like Dear Abby questions, and then I make Joe and, and Carrie try to answer them. Uh, so that's uh, the, the, that's all uh, on our bonus stuff. Five dollars a month gets you access to all of it. Coming up on eight years of content that you would get access to, which is a lot. I I understand, and I'm not saying you got to go all the way back, but understand that there is going to be a lot of new stuff coming out. Uh, there's going to you know be more of these episodes. I'm going to try to engage the Patreon a little bit more as well. So if you are a Patreon subscriber, you get access to our Discord that we share with Lions Led by Donkeys. Uh, you're going to get uh, a chance to vote uh, because I'm also trying to do a uh, once a month or every other month, do a Zoo Crew Watches where we let the Patreons uh, vote on a movie for us to watch and we'll watch it and talk about it. The last one we did was Predator, a movie that I had never seen before. Um, I have a big blank space with a lot of the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the old, um, the old action movies from the 80s. My dad didn't watch those movies, so I, I didn't watch those movies. So, uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's on the Patreon as well. And as I said, a lot of other good stuff. You're going to get early access to, uh, the interview stuff as well. Uh, I have one coming out with Steve Bannon. I try to do interview episodes a couple of times a month, one, once or twice a month. Usually I'm bringing on some, uh, rotating, uh, crop of journalists to talk about some of their latest articles. Uh, Steve and I talked about, uh, reporting pro, you know, issues with reporting in, um, uh, daycare centers in, uh, in, on, on federal, uh, on military bases. <clears throat> so it's kind of, kind of a heavy, it's, it's not too heavy, but it, it's a, uh, it's a really important piece that he worked on. That I wanted to highlight and talk about, but those come out early on the Patreon and then come out on the free feed about a week later. So you will get, you know, early access to stuff. So you're going to get, you're going to get all kinds of stuff and uh, you're going to get, uh, discount codes and things like that as well. So uh, join up to the Patreon, even if you join up for like free, even if you just sign up, I put out free stuff uh, as well, um, just to keep you guys engaged and keep you guys here and, and talking about things. So let me know. Uh, as I said, if there's anything that you want to see here, if there's anything that you want me to change, bring back, do more of, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I am I am ready to really tackle this again. And I don't, you know, grow the YouTube, sure, but also just have something alternative and have something different. Uh, I don't want to do the same thing, you know, constantly. We're, the podcast has changed a lot in the last eight years from, and a lot of times, not, you know, just like it was one way and now it's another. It's changed a lot uh, over over the years. So, you know, especially the further away from our military service that myself and Nate have gotten. You know, I was still in the Army when this podcast started. So, there's a lot, uh, a lot going on there. So, uh, sign up for the Patreon. Uh, tell me what you want. Uh, let me know what you like, and uh, we will try to make it happen for you. But uh, as always, thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next week.